Hello everybody, good morning. Um, so just to explain to some of you to start with, um, I know I'm not your usual progress coach, um, so we've got a few tutorial groups joined together this morning um, and we've got our guest speaker John here that's going to talk to you uh, because it's our futures week. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things, the session is going to be recorded, um, so if you have any troubles with internet or anything like that, please don't worry, we can send it out to you after. Um, Secondly, um, all registers will be done by the end of the day. So if you don't, um, if you look now and you're not marked in for tutorial, um, please just wait until the end of the day because we'll get a full attendee list to mark everyone in. Um, throughout the um, presentation, if you've got any questions at all, please post them in the chat box. And then um, after John has finished speaking, I will put them to him. Um, uh, so yeah, any you can wait till the end if you've got questions or just post them throughout, but I will go through them all at the end um okay so thank you very much and i'll pass over to john thank you uh, well th thank you uh, good morning everybody um so um my name is john john gething um and i'm a governor at the sixth film college um the title of my my talk is called my career in planning and i'll, I'll explain a little bit about that as we go through um the approach I'm going to adopt this morning is really to, we've got 45 minutes, talk for about 20 minutes, no more than that, I think, well, around that time, um, and really try and share some of my experiences about the way my career developed, give a flavour of what I've done, um, how I learned things, the mistakes I made, things that went well, choices I made, that I hope will help you. Um, and then, as I said at the end, um, so there will be an opportunity to have a, a conversation. I think that's that's really the best thing. So when people talk about planning, they often talk about different things. It can be called land use planning, uh, housing improvement areas, um, economic development, regeneration. And, and for many years, that's the work I did, uh, particularly I worked at Stoke-on-Trent City Council for a long while. So that, uh, and in the end, I, I left there uh, a few years ago um, through a package that they were doing for people to leave. Uh, and since then, I suppose my career has developed in a different way in that I'm a governor at the Sixth Form College. I've been on the board of a, a local housing association for nine years and I've chaired it for seven. So that those are the sort of things I've been doing. But I think the question, the important question is, and the thing I've been thinking about in relation to this talk is, well, how did I get to be doing those things and, and what did I do? So that, that's where I've got to, if you like. So I'll go back a little bit now and say, well, how did it start? Um, so winding back to, to school, um, I went to a, a grammar school, a state funded grammar school, and was in the sixth form. And I, I was studying art subjects, English, literature, history, and things like that. And I have to say, at that time, I'd got no real clear idea about what career I would do. Um, I'd got nothing particularly in mind. The sort of feeling then was that people who'd gone into the sixth form would, uh, they could go into teaching. They would usually look to go to college or to university. And so I, I applied um, and, and was offered a place at Warwick University to study um, in, um, English and American studies. And I was fine on the, the mock A levels, I got the grades. But when it actually came to the final exams, um, one or two of my grades at A level dropped. So I didn't get the place at Warwick, didn't go there. And I, I've not thought about it a lot for a while, but getting ready for this talk, I did think about it. And I think, well, actually, I wasn't all that disappointed. I was sort of going through a process, and I think a lot of us were then, and I wasn't really desperate to go. I, I would have gone, and maybe we would have worked out well, but I didn't. So that, that was the sort of first thing, and, and the thing I took from that now, thinking about this, is that um, Sometimes you need to reflect on, or I needed to reflect on what I wanted to do. So anyway, I needed to get a job and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I found out I managed to get a, um, a clerical job uh, called a clerical assistant um, 
in the civil service at, at the Inland Revenue. The Inland Revenue then had got offices dotted about all over the place. And when I, I joined that, um, I started to do clerical work there, but found out that because I'd got A-levels, I could actually apply to become an executive officer um, in the civil service uh, in Inland Revenue. So I decided to do that. I went through a formal civil service interview. I was accepted and I went through a training program with them. And I worked for two years at Stafford. I was then moved to Birmingham. And so that was dealing with people's income tax, all sorts of things like that. And it was quite structured and hard work. I mean, it was very formal then. So we started work at half past eight. We finished at five o'clock and we had an hour's lunch and that was it. And during the time I was there, I started to get interested and think again about whether I would actually like to go to university. So after I got moved to Birmingham, I, I, did, I was doing some sort of evening classes uh, for a possible law degree. And I had a chat with one of the lecturers after one evening and he, they, they said, well, why don't you try and apply for university? And, and you, you know, you could go as a mature student. Although I'd only been working for three years, so I wasn't, I don't know how mature I was. Um, and anyway, that's what I decided to do. And to cut a long story short, I applied to Keel University in Staffordshire. I had an interview and I was accepted. So that was a big change. And I think what I realised then, I was quite excited about that prospect. It really enthused me to go to Keel. And the time I was at Keel, it was a four year course uh, they've changed it now but the, the ethos of keel you, you, i mean you may know if you've had contact with them it was very much of a sort of broadly based um curriculum so people were studying art subjects science subjects you could move about um and i was intending to do law and english when i went during the first year i got very interested in um other subjects, particularly sociology. And at the end of the first year, I decided that what I would do would be to study English and sociology for my principal subjects at Keele. Um, you also have to do other subjects as well um, in, the, in the final three years. So I did economics and we had to do for a year. And also, because they want you to do a science, I had to do uh, chemistry for a year as well. It's quite broadly based. Um, while I was at Keele, I wasn't really thinking about, well, what career will I do? What will my future be? But I just enjoyed being there. It was it opened so many things up to me, the people I met, the subjects, and I was enthused by it. You know, towards the end of the, uh, the fourth year, I did start to think about, well, what will I do now? Um, and I, I, I got interested in I didn't really know what it meant, but it sort of took what you know what's called town and country planning. And I suppose after the Second World War, uh, when I read about it, planning in that at that time before any long before I got involved, and in it, it was very much about rebuilding uh, the country after the war. It was very much architect design led, uh, and that's an important strand in planning now. But there was a move when I was at Keele to, to actually say, well, it's also about what social scientists do, economists do, sociologists do. And I realised that it could be quite an interesting career. Um, about that time, it's towards the end of the last year, um, I actually met my, uh, my wife, uh, wife-to-be. And she was going to Leeds to do a degree in librarianship. And so... I decided to try and get a job in planning in a, in a local authority, um, and I did. I got one at Wakefield Metropolitan Borough Council as a planning assistant. So we moved up to to, to Yorkshire, and and I worked there for a while. It was while I was there, I was at, in that role for about a year. I had a choice. I knew that if I wanted to progress in planning, I'd got to either um, carry on working there and then do a planning qualification uh, part-time or actually go to a university and you, you could do a postgraduate degree course 
and I decided I'd do that. I suppose in hindsight, I was taking a bit of a chance because I wouldn't have a job at the end of it. Anyway, that's what I decided. Um, so Sheffield was close, Manchester was further away. They both did postgraduate planning courses and I applied to both. I got interviews at both and I was offered a place at Manchester for their two year degree course, postgraduate degree course. Uh, so I joined that uh, in the following September. And that was a very intensive uh, two years. Um, I think what they tried to do really, they were offering an undergraduate course as well, which was four years. And what they, they said with the postgraduates, they sort of almost crammed in the four, the four years into two. So it was still very much a, an architect planning design led course. But we, we had lectures on sociology, economics, the theory of planning and all sorts of things. And then we had to do uh, housing designs. We In the final year, we had to do a big major project where we had to, if you like, plan a town or how that, that could work. Uh, and that, that involved a huge amount of work. But um, that was a, it was a tremendous experience and a platform for me. And um, I... The, there were 12 of us on the course. Most of the people on it had, had got a geography degree. A couple of us had got sociology degrees. One was an economist and uh, another one um, had got a qualification in architecture. So we were a varied bunch uh, and we've actually stuck together since uh, over a long period of time. So I think that's something child with us. Anyway, to move on quickly, because I'm conscious of time. Um, after I'd completed that, we moved back to Staffordshire and I applied for jobs as a planning assistant at various local authorities. And I was fortunate enough to get a job at Stoke-on-Trent City Council as a planning assistant. And that was then dealing with what were called local plans. So that was looking at an area of the city and um, it's a sort of statutory planning process to go through to say, well, where would houses go? Where would this go, the other go? And I was involved in that for about 10, 10 months. At that time, there was quite a concern about, excuse me, I'm just going to have a drink of water. Quite a concern about uh, some of the older housing areas in the city were getting quite run down and there was a political pressure to say, well, can't something be done to improve these? And local authorities at that time had got powers under the Housing Acts to declare what they call general improvement, improvement areas and housing action areas where you could actually put money in to improve the houses, you could do environmental improvements around the houses and all sorts of things to actually make them attractive places to live. And a team was formed to um, take that forward. And I was asked to be part of that team. So we, it was called an urban renewal team. And I worked in that team for a few years and it was really an eye opener to me. I, I It didn't feel like work really. It was it was, I, I really loved it. Um, we were doing door-to-door -door surveys, meeting residents. And one of the things I learned from that in terms of, of work and career was that although you do things individually, you actually do things as a team. So I met landscape architects, uh, engineers, um, working with local councillors and others. And it, it was something that was very positive. I think what I enjoyed about it was that you saw an end result. Um, housing associations were involved as well. So um, the positives were you saw derelict land being reclaimed, play areas being put in, landscaped areas, residence houses were being improved. So that was really something that was very motivating. Uh, I'd been doing that for a few years and was looking to actually perhaps get a more senior job. Nothing was available at Stoke, so I managed to get a job at Wakefield Metropolitan District Council in the West Midlands, and um, which was good. It was different experience, but um, based on what I was doing, but in a, in a different area. Uh, I'd been there for a while, um, about 10 months, I think, to a year, and a job came up again at Stoke to actually be in charge of the urban renewal team that I'd, I'd worked in, which was a Chance I decided I'd go for that, and I did, and I got the job. So I was back at Stoke, but in this time I was sort of running the team. And the local authority, the local authorities then, 
had been given more time to um, declare what were called housing renewal areas. And it was what I'd done before, really, but on a, on a bigger scale. And I worked with people I knew. Some new people came in and we did that for about five or six years. So that was really um, a very positive, challenging, but exciting time. We did loads of things. <coughs> Pardon me. Qu quite a bit of money was spent in uh, terraced areas of the city, new developments, but in all sorts of things. Uh, so that was a, a very positive move for me. And I think having moved to Sandwell and moving back actually helped me because it gave me a sort of bit more, a bit of wider experience. And then in the late 90s, the, local, the government at the time introduced um, this scheme to actually a competitive scheme to put more money into local authorities if they wanted to bid for it. And it was it, at that time it was called the single regeneration budget. And Stoke decided it would bid for it. And I was chosen as one of the people to work on, on the first bid, which was a complete eye opener to me because um, although I'd got the past experience, it was very, very fast moving. It was a formal process. It involved not just the council, it involved local residents, businesses, we were working with civil servants as well, um, and a few of us worked on that. It was a very, very, um, it was stressful, but it was also very sort of a powerful moment because work, it ceased to be work in a way because people, we were so enthused by it. We were taking work home. Um, it was sort of, you know, when people talk in sport about people being in the zone, and I think we were, we were, we were highly motivated. We really wanted to win, win the bid for the city and we did. And it was, it was, it was a, a real eye opener. After that, um, at the end of that, it, it, we were obviously quite chuffed to have won and it, it, it had quite an impact. I was fortunate. Um, there's an organization called Common Purpose, which, which you may or may not have come across. And the idea behind that is that if people want to make a difference in areas, in municipalities, in towns, cities, it's better if people do it together. So whether it's the private sector, the public sector, the voluntary sector, residents working together. And it was a year long program called the Common Purpose Program. And I was nominated by the council uh, very kindly to go onto that. So every month we met uh, the, the other people I had presentations, we met people, I met businesses, we went all around, we saw the voluntary sector, and it gave me a much wider experience and knowledge of how um, how things worked, how cities worked, and what could be done to improve them. So that was another big career step for me, I think, in terms of experience and confidence and all sorts of things. And anyway, we... I'm going to carry on for about five minutes now because I've talked quite a bit and I'm, I really want to open it up so that if you've got questions and I, I can go into more detail about that. But after that, we, we carried on. There were these major external bids for the next six years. Uh, other things developed as well. After that, um, I had different roles, but then what, what can happen, and I, you, you may find it uh, at some stage when you're working, is that whether it's a private firm, whether it's a local authority, um, they will go through what's called a restructuring exercise, which they can do and, and will do. Very often that means that uh, they want to save money and they want to make job cuts. And a, a group of the people I work with went, went through, left through one of those schemes um, at Stoke. I, I carried on for a few years and decided I would. But when the opportunity came, there was yet another restructuring, I decided it would be a good move for me uh, to leave. So I left the local authority then. Um, but I, I felt that my career continued in a way because um, through someone I knew, they asked if I would like to join a board of a housing association in, in the city, which I did. And I've been involved as a board member of a housing association for nine years. And I, I actually was the chair of the board seven so we were as a housing association we were providing 
good quality rented accommodation, what's sometimes called social needs accommodation, but it's it's really to provide good quality housing for people who are on below average incomes. So for me, that was yet another development and you know, I've met other people there. And I think part of the, the skills or experience that I have developed um, stood me in good stead with that. And it, it just struck me going back, because I'm going to stop talking in a second and, and let, let you let you speak or ask questions. I would never have guessed <clears throat> or believed when I was at school or when I was thinking of going to Warwick that I would, do, I would have done all these things. The fact that I'm actually talking to you today, part of, I see my career, I'm, I'm not paid for it, but in, in monetary terms, but I actually got a huge pay back through being a governor at the Sixth Form College and the same with the Housing Association. So I suppose the, the conclusions I draw is that, you know, always keep your, your mind open to things. Try and um, try things. Sometimes they'll work, sometimes they won't. Um, I suppose in hindsight, I took some chances. I was fairly conservative in many ways. Uh, I found things I really enjoyed doing. And I found that by doing that and with working with people that I liked and, and was enthused by, um, I've been very lucky and I, I've had a great career. So I'll stop at that point. That's about 20, 25 minutes. So that should give us a bit of time for questions. So thank and I'll I'll take a glass of water. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, that was very interesting to hear your uh, career journey. Um, I think um, just while we wait for the questions to come in, I just wondered, could you um, just explain to the students a little bit about what your governor role is and, and what made you interest in, uh, interested in becoming a governor? Yeah, sure. I um, One of the people I worked with at Stoke um, was the governor of the Sixth Form College and I, I was he, he talked to me and sort of enthused me about that. One of the the bids, the these these large bids that we'd made for funding, was actually to improve or to pull money into Stoke on Trent to support young people um, in uh, in terms of projects, training, um, uh, and associated not, not with schools directly, but to Im improve people's employment prospects uh, uh, and things like that. And it's one of the things that made me realise that. Um, education is so important for everybody uh, throughout their lives. It was for me and it is for other people. And I thought, well, given the background I'd got, it would I would be interested to actually be involved in the Sixth Form College um, because it, it's an important uh, asset to the city. And the idea that young people who either live in Stoke-on-Trent or North Staffordshire or a wider area can go to a college it helps them with their lives to get connected. And so I, that, that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm a governor. So I do, uh, I've, I've enjoyed it, I do it. I do mock interviews, I do other things um, and try and play a role in, in helping to support the college. I think it's very important for the city to have something like the Sixth Film College. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so we'll take the first question from Hannah. Um, Hannah has asked, do you think that your experiences um, have helped you become the person you are today and helped you build your characteristics? And she just put in brackets, um, experiences of not going to university until later on and moving to Yorkshire, et cetera. Yeah, for me, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't um, tell anyone what, 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 what they should or shouldn't do. I mean, I think when I was at, at the grammar school uh, in sixth form, I wasn't arrogant, I don't think, and I, I don't think I was naive as such, but I, I hadn't really thought about things very much. And so I suppose a lot of us then were on a sort of, well, we'd gone to school, we'd, we'd go to college or we'll go to university and then we'll get a job. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think, I think not doing that, um, not that Warwick isn't a great place to go to, but not doing that, working for three years. And I think I also appreciated Although I got a lot from, from the Inland Revenue and working there, it was a very formal setup then. And I realized I didn't want to be like that or work like that. And one of the thoughts that came to my mind, uh, I was in a, working at a, a tower block in Birmingham and there were several departments, different districts, if you want to call it, 
there and I thought, well, my life's going to be, I might get promoted, I might move up or down a tower block. And I, I didn't want to do that. And when I got the place at Kiel, that was really a, a wonderful moment because I felt it was something I wanted to do. I felt free. I got the time to do things and to reflect. And that made a big change for me. Uh, and then moving to Yorkshire as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so another question from Lynn. He's asked, um, what is one of the biggest projects that you've worked on? I suppose the, the, the biggest one um, talked about the single regeneration budget. And um, if I just give a bit of background on that, that, that was money coming directly through the government. Um, but at, towards the end, uh, the governments had changed. It was a conservative boy with the details, which had changed from a conservative government to a Labour government. And they had established what they called regional development agencies. And the regional development agencies for the West Midlands and for other areas wanted to they got this idea there of what the what they called regeneration zones where there were cities or towns that needed like stoke on trent that's where the, the the existing economy had, had gone down and they wanted to put money into it and they were wanted to use the the last round of the single regeneration budget to sort of help fund the launch of a regeneration zone so we then the, the last big big sorry the bid we did uh we bid for 40 million pounds direct funding uh for stoke on trent which partly helped that and that would bring in other money as well european money then because we were still getting money from europe and private sector money so that was the biggest project i worked on with others and it was it was very difficult in some ways because the first one we did we were fresh to it. The sixth one, we knew, I suppose if you, when you have to write essays or do or do things, once you've done them and you know what, once you've written an essay or two or three or a report, you know what work is involved and we knew how much work there was. And it was really hard, but that, that was the biggest one and, and we won the lot. So that was a huge, massive, massive project. Okay, thank you. Next question um, from Jonathan. Uh, he asks, was there any moments where you were torn between multiple career choices? Um, not, not really. I, no, I, I, I think I was, I sort of was lucky in a way because I, I, I said I sort of started in, in in the civil service, decided I didn't want to do that. Um, then. Um, when I went to Kiel, I became interested in planning. I think I was fortunate because it, during my career in, in planning, when we moved into what you call housing renewal and that sort of thing, I really loved that. Uh, I think if I'd have been, there's nothing wrong with people who, who do um, statutory planning and land use planning and all that sort of thing. It's important for development plans for an area, but I think that I, I I sort of progressed uh, and things cropped up. Um, so I, I don't, there was always something fresh coming in, I think. So it, things widened out for me. And I suppose at the end, but with the Housing Association, so I, I didn't really feel spoiled. For, I was lucky, I think, uh, to be in that field because it's so wide ranging. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I've got another two questions from Hannah, so I'll, I'll ask them separately. Um, the first yeah. one is, do you think your views and perceptions have changed throughout your life as you have been able to get more experiences? Yeah, definitely, Hannah. Yes, definitely. Um, I think what, I, what I've realised is that, I mean, one of the things about planning and, and or any work, I think, what, one of the things I learned very quickly was that it was about things are done by teamwork i mean we do things individually but my experience has been you also get things done you have to work with other people and when i got to the position where i was sort of responsible for teams of people and managing people i realized that some of the people in the team could do things i couldn't do and it was a matter of also trying to see the other person's point of view and uh, things aren't simple i I, th I think that I suppose when I, I don't know when I, when I was young, I'd sort of got fairly fixed ideas about certain things. And 
I suppose we all do, but I, I think that um, my views have, have changed and I, it's made me realise that things aren't simple to do. Uh, and the other thing that most people at work or whatever they do, I think try to do their best. And it, it's a matter of trying to, um, to appreciate that. Okay, uh, so Hannah's second question was, um, what advice would you give to younger people today who are going to university or starting work? Okay, well, I mean, it's never easy, I don't think, but I think given the, the experiences that we're all going through at the moment, and it particularly bears on you with the, the pandemic, I think um, it, it will vary from person to person. Some people will be very fixed and clear about what they want to do. I, friends of mine uh, wanted to teach or to do certain things and have carried on doing that. Other people aren't very sure. I think if you can get a course or, or, or something that, that infuses you, that you're good at or you enjoy, that you find a challenge, that, that's the thing to do to start with. If you can't get onto a course or you want to do some work, get a job or, or do something that interests you. I mean, there are loads of things if you can't get paid work. I mean, there are. I think the big thing in planning at the moment, uh, quite rightly in, in the world, is about sustainability and the environment. And there are lots of groups, voluntary groups or others, find out about things like that, get involved. Um, and you may find that by doing that, um, it will spark things in, in your mind uh, and you, it'll take you in different directions. But just, just start something, I think, something that you think you'll enjoy. Um, either go straight away to uni or start a job if you can. But meet other people and do things and, and start to reflect. That, 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 that would be my advice. OK, thank you. Um, I'll just ask a question, John, because um, I think that's it. Unless anyone else has got other questions, please do post them in the chat. Um, you obviously have experienced two different universities. So you've been to Keele and both Manchester, Manchester being a Russell group um, and Keele being more of a post-92 university. So <coughs> was, uh, and I think there are also two universities that lots of our students would go to. Um, did you find any main differences between them or, or did you have a preference for either? Yeah, well, I um, I enjoyed Keele particularly because it was the first one and it was a very wide ranging course. Um, so that, that was a, it was a great experience at Keele uh, and I always look at it very positively. Not to say I'm, I'm not positive about Manchester. I think the thing about Manchester that several of us found, it wasn't the university um, and I think it did stand us in good stead, but at the time it was a very architecturally based course and it was um two years and it, it was something that myself and a few others perhaps weren't as familiar with after doing sociology and stuff at keel but manchester's a very good university and i got a lot from it um some of the lecturers i met there there was one, one of the guys um shared his t one of the lecturers uh, shared his time between cambridge university and manchester and exposure to people like that was great. So I, I think it, it depends on the course and the individual, but I mean, Manchester's a great place. Keele's a great place. Um, I think it, it depends how what suits you and your course, really, but they're both very good universities. Okay, that's great. Um, so no more questions have popped up. Um, so yeah. I think um, that's probably it, John. So just a huge thank you because it's been great um, for you to answer the students' questions as well as um, just give us your whole career journey. Um, would it be okay if we have any questions afterwards to uh, point, uh, send them in your direction? Of course, yeah. And I thank you and I wish everybody well uh, with their studies and with everything else. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, John. Okay, guys, I'll let you get logged off then. If you do have any other questions, please do email me and I can forward them over to John. Thank you very much, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Okay, John, I think that's it. Everybody's gone, so I'll let you get logged off. Bye.